I guess uh, everybody got my email yesterday, right? Yes? Am I audible? Yes. Yes? Okay. Yes, yeah. So I, I, I sent you a mail yesterday, right, regarding some silly mistake that I did. I mean, nobody pointed me, uh, pointed that out to me. Could you guys figure it out? No? Nobody could figure it out? You have the, I mean, uh, like, my, you have the uh, videos of my lecture, you could have uh, gone back to that, or you guys were too lazy to do that. Okay, anyways. So, I'm going to go back to that again. So, uh, just uh, have a look at this. If you recall, whatever is there, I have already pre written in Blackboard. It is nothing but the recurrence formula, the recurrence formula from yesterday's class. So, what we were doing, we were considering uh, this differential equation, probably I call it A, and then I assume that, I assume that, I mean, uh, x equal to 0, x equal to 0, although I could have taken any other non-zero uh, real number also, uh, as my, see, x equal to 0 was an ordinary point for this differential equation, right? And then, what we did, we assume that since uh, uh, x equal to 0 is an ordinary point, so that is why px and qx, they can be expressed in terms of, in terms of infinite series like this, infinite series like this, about the point x equal to 0, right? And then, I assume that both these series for px and, uh, px and, px and qx, px and qx, right? They have radius of convergence such that the, both this series converges in this interval where of course r is greater than 0, right? And then assuming that y has a series solution of this type, okay? So by plugging in all those, I mean, expressions px, qx and y into this equation, finally we were getting this relation. Is it okay with everybody? Fine? Okay? Yes, sir. Finally, finally, we were yes, getting that relation. Okay, so I, I have always started recording. Okay, fine. So now, uh, while working this relation out, I made one silly mistake. So that silly mistake was like uh, when your n equal to 1, when n equal to 1, uh, sorry, not n equal to 1. Uh, just yeah. So the, the, this relation, if you recall, it was valid for n equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. Okay. So now when n equal to 1, when n equal to 1, see this is going to reduce to what? This is going to reduce to 2 into 3 into a3, right? And this part, this part, it is going to reduce to what? k equal to 0 to 1, right? Then k plus 1, ak plus 1, then p, 1 minus k plus ak cube, 1 minus k, okay? See, if you have difficulty in uh, visualizing this or like say working it out uh, without breaking it, just simply write it down once again, okay? So then what is going to happen when I mean k equal to 0, k equal to 0, so if I substitute k equal to 0 here, this is going to give me what? a, because k equal to 0, it is a1, and this is p1, then a0, then q1, and then once you plug in k equal to 1 here, this is going to give you 2, a2, p0, because 1 minus 1, 0, plus a1 now, and since k equal to 1, so this is q0, okay? So, if you uh, look back at the video, you will see that 
this term I made a mistake. So instead of a1, I have put a0. No? Please correct that one. Okay? Is it okay with everybody now? What mistake I did? Fine? So this is where I, I did the mistake. And let me tell you again, like say, if you have difficulty of working this out, simply, I mean, uh, plug in the values of n here, no? and then, then expand it. So it is going to be easier for you. Okay? Fine. So uh, now, uh, before going to going into the second part of the theorem, so I would like to ask you one more question. See, yesterday uh, the theorem was like uh, you have proved that you have proved that if uh, <coughs> I am giving initial condition y x naught uh, equal to say a naught and y prime x naught equal to a one a one then then this this series this series is going to constitute a unique solution right for the given differential equation that was the first part okay and the second part was that second part was that the this particular series that i have uh, uh, i have taken as the series solution power series solution this also has radius of convergence radius of convergence r okay so basically like say the uh, validity of this series is going to have uh, in those intervals that has been defined for that has been defined for the series for px and qx. Okay, fine. And then, like say yesterday, I also told you that okay, once you break this uh, up, like say y equal to a naught plus a one x plus a to x squared, etc. So then, when I'm plugging, say, uh, this x not equal to 0, so x not equal to 0, you can easily see that these two conditions are satisfied by, by this. Okay. My point is that you shouldn't be under the impression that only x equal to 0, only by plugging in x equal to 0, you are going to get these two initial conditions to be satisfied. Okay. I mean, okay, say suppose instead of uh, a, 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 x naught equal to 0, say suppose it is something non zero, say suppose it is x naught, then what is going to happen? Can you tell me why why this is still going to work? Why this is still going to work? Are you getting my point? Are you getting my question? Over series, over series will be about x naught. So exactly, exactly, exactly. Because then this is going to be. This is going to be something like this. This is going to be something like this. Okay, fine. So even when you are going to I mean, plug this in, it is always going to satisfy. Okay. Basically, what I want to point out is that the remaining number of terms here in the series, you will be able to make them zero because you are going to consider x equal to x naught there. Right? So, the term within the parenthesis is always going to give you 0. In that way, whatever, I mean, the initial condition, you are going to, uh, you want it to be satisfied, it is going to be satisfied. Okay? Fine. So, that is one thing. So, now, I am moving towards the part of the proof. When I am going to, uh, when I am going to prove that, when I am going to prove that, uh, like, uh, that, the, Solutions, solution given by this power series, this it has the same radius of convergence R as the power series for Px and Qx. Okay, right? Pardon? Yeah. Uh, I am thinking that uh, suppose I am expanding uh, this power series with respect to the center is not. Uh -huh. but my initial point is some uh, uh, another point that is y of x1 equals to some y naught and y dash x naught equals to some y1. Uh, no, 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 no. Here, uh, sorry, sorry, just a minute. Let, 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 let me tell you uh, one thing. Like, like say, here, here, uh, you should not uh, perceive this, you should not perceive this to be, you should not perceive this to be, like say, any solution. Okay. So here, we are always going to seek the solution about a point at which you are going to get, at which, I mean, you are going to get the initial conditions. Okay, fine? 
you we that that particular so uh, basically what uh, what we are going to do uh, we are going to see the solution in such a way that the solution curve passes through that particular point okay fine and solution curve passes to that particular point and about that point we are going to see a power series solution other, other, otherwise, I mean, those two conditions are not going to be satisfied. Okay, fine. Yeah. So, uh, so far, I mean, uh, whatever we are considering, yes, we are considering it as initial level problem only. Yes. Okay. Uh, see, uh, for boundary level problems, uh, the theorems will be different. I mean, they are going to be like in terms of some agent function and expansion where. Uh, those prime Leibniz theorems are going to come into form. Okay, fine. So now I am going to prove that this uh, power series has the same radius of convergence R, which was nothing but the radii of convergences uh, of the series for Px and Qx. Okay, so now my series for Px, I assume that it is uh, something like Pn x to the power n, n goes from 0 to infinity. And series for Qx, series for Qx is like this Qn x to the power n, right? Since they converse, since they converse, right, 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 for all x belonging to this interval, so then what I can consider, I can consider that each, each of each of the terms in this series in absolute values. They are bounded by some number. Is it okay? So what I mean by that, what I mean by that, that uh, there must exist, there must exist a uh, number, say small r, strictly less than r, in such a way that, in such a way that I am going to get this. I am going to get this. Say p n r to the power n. This is going to be less than equal to m, and then your p n. R, and of course, R, I am uh, choosing it as a non negative number, or non negative real number. Okay? Uh, this is, is it okay? Fine? Okay? So, based on that, I am going to construct the proof. Okay? So, now look at this reference, look at this reference formula. Let me call this, uh, let me call it A. Let me call it A. So then, what is going to happen if I take if I take the absolute value of both the sides? Uh, that is going to lead me to your from here. From here, I am going to get I am going to get n plus one, n plus two, mod of a n plus two, right? And uh, that is going to be that is going to be your less than or equal to k going from zero to n k going from zero to n. And uh, okay, let me firstly write it down. Like say a okay a k plus one. Then sorry. A plus one, then a k plus one, p n minus k uh, plus a k q n minus k. Fine? I can write it like this. Okay? So now if you make use of if you make use of these two relations, huh? these two relations, and of course I am assuming that these two relations are uh, Satisfied for all n. Okay, so then what is going to happen? What is going to happen here? Uh, so that means that means r to the power n is uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Did I? Yeah. Sorry, not r to the power n. So from here, what I can get? Like say, if I if I take say p n minus k mod of p n minus k. So that is going to be, isn't it? Is it okay with everybody? Fine? 
Yes? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So what what I am going to do, what I am going to do, uh, or this can be this can be simply written as this can be simply written as see uh, if I if I uh, write it I, I may write it like this right okay fine yes right so I am going to substitute this here in this expression as well as in this expression okay so that is going to give me that is going to give me uh, like this is this is again going to be less than equal to let me write it as m r to the power n and then k equal to 0 to n and then this is uh, k plus 1 uh, mod of a k plus 1 and uh, then mod of a k a k and into x to the power k. Is it okay? Fine? Is it okay? Just check. Yes? Fine? Yes. Yes. Now I am going to do some kind of oh this is this is this is R. Sorry, this is R. Thank you. This is R. This is R. This is R. Okay. Uh, now uh, I am going to do one manipulation. Okay. I'm not going to give the explanation right now. But I'm going to give the explanation in a later uh, little while from now. Okay, so obviously, uh, so that means what is going to happen? Uh, maybe now I can get rid of this. What I have got, I have got that n plus one into n plus two into mod this. This I have got to be less than equal to m by r to the power n, uh, k going from 0 to n, k plus 1, mod a k plus 1, and plus mod a k, right? Mod a k, and then r to the power k. Is it okay? It's fine. So now, what I am going to do, I am simply going to add one term a n plus 1 r here. Mm. Obviously, even then, uh, my inequality is going to be fine, right? If this is less than this term, obviously, they all be positive. They all be positive. This is going to be less than that. Huh? I'll give you the explanation why I have taken that later on. Is it okay? Huh? At, at, at least the relation is true. Huh? Why I have wrote in the extra term, I, I am not going to divulge right now. Only after a while, I am going to divulge. Okay. So uh, let me call it B. Let me call it B. Okay. So now, what I am going to do, I am going to define a new series. I'm going to define a new series. Okay, uh, new series something like something like your b and x to the power n and going from zero to infinity. Okay, so now what I'm going to do for that for that I'm going to define say let let uh, your constants b not be such that b not equal to mod of a not and then uh, b1 equal to mod of uh, a1 mod of a1 okay and and your n plus 1 n plus 2 
bn plus 2 is equal to bn plus 2 is equal to m by r to the power n summation is going from k plus 1 bk plus 1 plus bk r to the power k plus m bn plus 1 r for all n greater than equal to 2. So basically, I have uh, defined some constant, constants are in B0, B1, B2, etc. through this formula, through this formula. Is it okay? Through this formula. Is it okay? Fine? So then, what is going to happen? What is going to happen? You are definitely Right? Definitely, I am going to get that. Is it okay? Yes? Are you guys still there? Yes, sir. Yes? See, just uh, for the time being, see, just. You, you have to believe me what I am doing, okay, it is, it is going to work, huh? this is just a procedure, this is just a procedure, you may be thinking, why all of a sudden these constants, B, uh, B's have uh, come into existence, but why I have wrote that in, this is going to give you the clue, this particular uh, inequality, right, see, if, if now, I can prove that if now now I can prove that this series for I can prove that this series in absolute value this series in absolute value is less than your B n x to the power n right then what is going to happen by comparison test my comparison test what? If this series converges, this is also going to converge, isn't it? Are you getting a point or not? Right? Yes. So that is that is what I am trying to do. That is what I am trying to do. Okay, fine. So okay. Now I hope you believe me. So now look at this one ah, this is this particular relation is very very important so what i'm going to do what i'm going to do i am going to replace your uh, n by n minus one first and then i'm going to replace n by n minus two next in B. Okay? So now if I plug in n by n minus 1, so this is going to give me your n into n plus 1, n into n plus 1, uh, then your bn plus 1. Okay? So this is equal to m by r to the power n minus 1, k going from 0 to n minus 1, then then what will happen to this is hmm? what will happen to this? Is it going to k minus 1, something like that? See, no. <laughs> yes, this is not going to change. This is not going to change because here I am simply getting n. Okay, so this is the first part. This is the first part, and then if I if I plug in 
uh, again now in this relation n equal to n minus 1 or simply in, the, in this relation n equal to n minus 2 then that is going to give me n say from here I am going to get n from here I am going to get n minus 1 hmm? n minus 1 dn and then this is n by r to the power n minus 2 this summation going from k to 0 to n minus 2 of course this is going to remain same remain same x to the power k and then from here plus m b n minus 1 r yeah fine okay now now again some more manipulation so now what i am going to do what i am going to do this equation say uh, that was b this is say capital c say say this is capital d okay so now what i am going to do i am going to multiply both the sides of c by r okay because r being non zero that is always going to be allowed that is always going to be allowed so that is going to give me this into r okay if i multiply it by r so that means i can simply write it this is it okay fine yes sir. yes so and then here it is going to be r square is it okay fine so next thing what i am going to do next thing what i am going to do this one this one firstly i am going to go from k equal to 0 to n minus 2 hmm? r to the power k so when your k equal to n minus 1 when k equal to n minus 1 what happens this becomes m by r to the power n minus 2 so now in this expression simply for k i am going to substitute n minus 1 is it okay fine so if i substitute n minus 1 this term is going to give me your n b n and this term is going to give me b n minus 1 and I already have and of course I have r to the power k uh, yeah for k I am going to substitute n minus 1 so just n b n plus b n minus 1 then r to the power n minus 1 okay and then this remaining term is it okay fine yes okay so uh, now see one thing now if I work with this, if I work with this, then what is going to happen? This is simply R. Is it okay? Fine? Yes? R to the power n minus 1 divided by R to the power n minus 2. So that is simply R, isn't it? So can you please? Ha ha. See, can you please repeat? Okay, so okay, fine, don't worry. So what I have done, what I, I have done here, here, firstly, this series I am expanding from k equal to 0 to n minus 2, right? So this is this is that part. Okay, so then I am left with the n minus 1 h term of this series, right? For that, what I have to do simply for these values of k. I have to simply substitute n minus 1, right? So if I do that, then what is going to happen? This term is already there, 
r to the power n minus 2, right? And now, what is going to happen here if k is n minus 1? This term is simply going to give me n. This is bn. Now, instead of k, bn minus 1. And then, r to the power n minus 1. r to the power n minus 1. Is it okay? Now, it is clear? Yes, sir. Yes? So, now, yes, r to the power n minus 1 divided by r to the power n minus 2 is simply r, isn't it? Okay? Fine? Now I, I hope it is clear. So now, if you look at this, if you look at this, then you will see that see, I have m b n minus 1 r. m b n minus 1 r. So, this one along with this term is going to give me n into n minus 1 b n. Is it okay? Yes? Yes, sir. Yes? yes? So that is why that is why I am going to write I am going to write here uh, n into n minus 1 b n then I am left with this extra term I am having plus uh, n m b n r and then the, then m b n r squared. Okay? Fine? It, it, you will see I mean, what I am trying to get. Huh? What I am trying to get, now ne next thing it will come. Hmm? So, now probably you realize why this extra term in the original series for A was roped in. Is it clear why, why that term was roped in now? Isn't it? Term like this, term like this. It was originally, it was m a n plus 1 into r. Now you know the rational behind roping in that extra term. Is it okay? Fine? Okay. So, now, now okay, can you tell me what I am trying to do? Maybe uh, let me do one thing, then it will be more clear to you what I am trying to do. Yes, now can you tell me what I am trying to do? Yes? Do you need a hint? You got a iteration formula. I, I got what, a what? Iteration formula. That is fine. Apart from that, See, remember, what is our objective? Our objective is to prove that the series a n x to the power n is convergent, right? I have already told you that by introducing the new series in, in b n, I am going to prove that, like say the series for a n in absolute value is less than or equal to the series for b n, right? If I can prove that the series for b n is convergent. Right? Then my job is done. So now, that is comparison test. In order to prove that the series for B is, uh, uh, is convergent, I am going to use what test now? <laughs> the clue is there. Ratio, ratio test. Yes, that is what it is. That is what it is. So now, from this relation, now from this relation, uh, yes, this. I am going to erase that bridge now. Now, from this, whatever remains in your blackboard, okay, this is equal to this. What I am getting, what I am getting, I am getting b n plus 1 by b n. So that is going to give me your 
uh, n into r and then your n into n minus 1 uh, plus n n r plus n r square. Hmm. So what is what is limit n tends to infinity this what is this going to be hmm? one by r Basically, what I'm going to have if I divide everything by n square, <laughs> but still let me let me verify it. So this is going to give me one minus one by n plus m r by n plus m r square by n. Then this is going to give me fine. So as n tends to infinity, definitely. This is going to give you 1 by r. Is my job done? Hmm? Is this the ratio test? Is this the same series is my series is not this. My series is this, isn't it? Right? So, what I have to do this is so n plus 1 x term is x to the power n plus 1, n x term is this. Is it okay? Right? I have to rope in, to rope in x now here, isn't it? Fine. Although eventually, right? So this this this, this was my objective in fact. Okay. So now what you get? Now what you get? Now what you get that from here, from here, I get uh, this one. From from here, uh, if if I take this, if I take this, so that means. This will be simply equal to, I can write, therefore, therefore, this will be simply equal to this into mod x, isn't it? This into mod x, isn't it? So, this will be this. Is it okay with everybody? Right? Yes. Right? So, here the mod x term is x term. Fine? Mod x term is x term. And I know that by ratio test, like uh, the series is going to be convergent if okay, fine. So that means mod of x less than r. Okay, so now again I have assumed that this small r is strictly less than capital R, isn't it? Fine. So basically it tells you, basically it tells you that the series, that the series solution A n X n, right, is its interval of uh, validity or when this series is going to converse, it is going to lie in the same interval of convergence in the, of, of the uh, series for Px and Qx. That is what it is. Is it okay? Fine. So, although I mean the uh, proof is like a bit kind of tricky and lengthy, but uh, I mean if you do it in your in your own, then everything will be I mean more clear to you. Hmm? Please, I mean uh, do it uh, on your own yourself. Okay, because you will have the video and then write down as I have been reiterating. Somebody was talking about iteration. 
I am reiterating over and again. Please write down everything systematically. Okay, fine. So, how much time do I have? Okay, so now uh, I am going to do one particular example where, uh, and remember, uh, whatever we have done this, although uh, by equation remains the same, this one I have done for ordinary points. Remember, later on we are going to move to regular points. Okay. Although the same equation, same differential equation, but the treatments are going to be different. And this is going to help you, this proof is going to help you for the proof for the existence of Frobenius series as solutions for differential equations having your regular uh, singular points. Okay. So now, okay. So take this uh, differential equation. Okay. So uh, here, uh, what you need to prove that. See earlier, uh, all the examples that we have worked on, you have seen that. The recurrence formula, it was, uh, it involved only two terms, right? So yesterday I told you that it is not necessary that the recurrence formula is going to involve only two terms, right? It may involve three terms also. So this is an example where it is going to, I am going to show that it has more than two terms and the remaining part of the problem I am going to uh, divulge later on. Okay, so uh, now if I substitute, if I substitute your uh, y equal to uh, that infinite series a n x to the power n, then what this is going to give me? Uh, see now because you are experienced, I am going to do it directly. I am going to do it directly. So I am directly going to substitute it. So, okay, let me wait for some time till it dries up. Okay, fine. Uh, so, And this one, what I'm going to do, say, let me do it like this. Uh, so, is it okay, everybody? the directly okay so now uh, if you if you look at the terms if you look at the terms here obviously for n equal to 2 x to the power n minus 2 so this is this series starts from x to the power 0 this series again starts from x to the power 0 but here you can see that if you plug in n equal to 0 this is going to start from x squared is it okay with everybody fine that is why we will have to take the first two terms out from this and this series, right? So then that is going to give me, that is going to give me for the first term, if n equal to 2, uh, this is going to be what? 2, a2, if n equal to 3, this is going to be 6, a3x, right? And uh, similarly, similarly from here, similarly from here, I am going to get your p plus half, p plus half into simply a naught plus a1x, okay, a naught plus a1x, okay. 
So now let me concentrate on the remaining terms. Okay. So since I have uh, taken out this, so now <coughs> this is going to start from n equal to 2, this is going to start from n equal to 1. Hmm? Four. This is going to start from n equal to four. Okay, and uh, now my remaining task is going to be remaining task is going to be I mean making all the powers of x similar. Okay, so now what I am going to do? So the remaining part I am going to manipulate uh, straightforwardly. So what I am going to do here? X to the power n. So now see, it starts from n equal to 4. So when you plug in n minus 2 equal to p such that your n equal to p plus 2. When n equal to uh, 4, p is going to be equal to 2. So obviously, I can do like this. 2 to infinity as before. This is going to be n plus 2, n plus 1, a, n plus 2. Now, here it already starts from 2. I don't need to worry about it. So p plus half uh, your a n, p plus half a n. And for this one, for this one, what, what do you see? If you plug in n plus 2 equal to p, when n equal to 0, p equal to 2. So by replacing the dummy suffix p with n, again it is going to start with n equal to 2. But when n plus 2 equal to p, n equal to p minus 2. So basically you are going to get here a n minus 2. Is it okay with everybody? Fine? See this line, I mean, right? So you, you are experienced enough. You are experienced enough. So from here, from here, I see that okay, of course, for all M. Okay, now uh, here. Here, you see that, uh, what is happening here? You see that the recurrence formula has more than two terms. Recurrence formula has more than two terms. Okay, so uh, of course, what you can do through this recurrence formula, you can find some way of finding all the coefficients in the power series, all the coefficients uh, of different powers of x in the power series in terms of uh, like say two terms like generally when uh, when I am saying that is two terms because if your initial condition is given in terms of say a naught and a1 right so my job should be to find out the remaining coefficients in terms of a naught and a1 right but here you are having like say one term in terms of another two terms. So that task may not be that easy. Okay. Fortunately, fortunately, here if I if I use this substitution, if I use this substitution, then the Okay. If I use this substitution, then I get a differential equation. I get a differential equation when in that equation I again try to use a power series. From there, I get a recurrence formula involving only two terms. Okay? So let us try to work it out. I'm going to do it first. So what I'm going to do, I'm simply going to substitute this here okay 
So now if I substitute it here, uh, y equal to Uh, y equal to w e to the power minus x to the power x squared by 4. Okay? Uh, from here, your y prime is going to be uh, okay, w prime 4 then minus x by 2, right? Okay, so maybe I can <coughs> write this as minus x. This is again your y, x by 2 into y. Is it okay? Fine. And uh, then from this relation, from this relation, your y double prime that is going to be equal to w double prime to the power minus x square by 4 and then as before uh, minus w prime x by 2 e to the power fine and then minus your y by 2 and then minus x by 2 y prime right minus x by 2 y prime okay so can we do something here ah i think i am i'm already getting some pattern here okay now uh what i'm going to do just a minute x by 2 and now again see uh this is y prime. I'm getting y by two. I have already got. Oh. I'm getting x to the power four and p. Okay, fine. Uh, so. Only thing is that I have got one x by two just a minute. See, basically, what I am trying to do, uh, I am trying to substitute this here, okay, which is going to uh, get me rid of all y's, and I am going to get an equation in terms of uh, uh, w only. Hmm? That 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 is that is what my is. Can you figure it out? I mean, if we replace the value of y dashed. Huh? Y. Yeah. Okay, okay. So let me replace it then in this way. So this is minus x by 2, and this is going to be. W prime e to the power minus this minus x by 2y. Okay, fine. So I am getting rid of this. So this is, yeah, I think I am almost there. So, okay. So now what I am going to do, what I am going to do from here, so y w prime. This is going to be equal to uh, you take uh, e to the power minus x to the power 4 out, huh? e to the power 4. If you do that, 4 out. So, if you do that from here, you are going to get omega double prime 
from here you are going to get uh, minus omega prime x by 2 okay and uh, from here again you are going to get again you are going to get minus x by 2 omega prime isn't it fine so this one and this one together it is going to give me simply minus omega prime x is it okay fine this term and this term together okay and then then uh, what else do i have uh, yeah I am I am left to it, I am left to it plus I am left to it plus your x to the power 4 minus half y. Fine? X to the power 4 minus half y. Is it okay with everybody? Fine? So now now what I am going to do. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do, see, uh, I'm almost there. See, it, some pattern is evolving. See, y double prime plus x to the power 4 you bring here, half you bring here, right? Okay? And then if I bring p here, so that means e to the power minus x to the power 4 omega double prime minus omega prime x py is what? y is omega e to the power minus x to the power 4, isn't it? e to the power minus x to the power 4 is already there, right? So this is simply going to be, is it okay? Fine? Right? So, from there, because this is equal to 0, I am going to get my new equation as omega double prime minus uh, your x omega prime plus p omega, this is equal to 0. p omega, this is equal to 0. Okay? So, now, let us try a new power series. Let us try a new power series for this. I'll, I'll do it quickly. Hmm? Uh, just I'll do halfway through and then you'll have an idea that uh, the recurrence formula it is going to contain only two terms. Hmm? Okay, so let me just confirm whether my equation is correct or not. Yeah. Now, uh, suppose, suppose I am using this for omega or w, what one you choose to call it, okay? So, then, again, uh, this is going to give me n equal to 2 to infinity, n to n minus 1, c n, absolute power n minus 2. I am going to do it quick. Hmm? n minus 2 minus c n equal to 1 to infinity n c n and now uh, this was x to the power n minus 1 right with this x simply this is going to be x to the power n and then plus p uh, this c n x to the power n and going from 0 to infinity okay fine so obviously this is going to start with x equal to x to the power 0, right? This is going to start with x to the power 1. This is also 
x to the power 0. So, I have to take one term out from here. Okay, see, uh, uh, just a minute. Cn and Cn. Okay, fine. So, what is going to happen? Eventually, eventually, this C is going to be what? Uh, yeah. See, now earlier, in earlier, it started with x squared, right? But here I have to take only one term out. Is it okay with everybody? Yes. Huh? I'll have to take only one term out. If I take one term out, so your n is going to start from 3. Hmm. Once I take it out, when n is going to start from 3, when I am going to plug in n minus 2 equal to p in my eventual series, after taking uh, those, uh, I mean, x to the power 0 terms out, I am going to get here, I am going to get here as before n plus 2 into n plus 1, uh, then c n plus 2. Hmm. And from here, it already starts from uh, a. Uh, your this is going to be minus n c n because it is already starting with n equal to one. And once you take this term out from here, uh, x to the power zero term out here. So basically, it is going to give you again from n equal to one to infinity. So this is simply going to be uh, plus p c n. x to the power n, this is equal to 0. Are, are, are this no point? Right? Once I, once I take the x to the power 0 term, so basically x to the power 0 term from here, it is going to be, say, 2c2 uh, two from here. And from here, it is going to be plus pc0. Is it okay? Fine? So, what I want to emphasize here is that eventually, eventually, I have got a series here, sorry, I have got a reference formula here, you can see that it involves only two suffixes there, it involves only two suffixes and it is easier to work out. Is it okay with everybody? Right? Yes. Sir. Yes. Today what is happening? I mean, uh, many people they are just switching on and not attending the class or what? Huh? They are doing something else? Today you guys are pretty silent. Are you thinking about the exam on 17th? Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is but uh, I'll be able to do only the first part. Don't worry about it. I'm going to so solution about regular points okay so you already know this what is a regular point mm -hmm. but still I want to repeat it because many of the concepts well, probably earlier you uh, I mean accomplished everything mechanically where is this idea coming from why we choose the power series solution to be in some specified form why it is so like say why we choose here uh, from any series all this uh, Questions. All these questions I'll try to answer. Okay, let me see how much time I have got. Okay, I have got at least another 10 minutes. So, uh, as before, I'm going to consider, I'm going to consider the second order linear differential equation, second order linear differential equation, of course, homogeneous. Okay, and uh, now 
Of course, these regular points, they are nothing but singular points. Huh? They are nothing but singular points. Okay? So, what is the definition of regular point? Can, uh, can somebody tell me? Okay. Firstly, let us suppose let us suppose that x equal to x naught is a singular point of say one singular point of one. Okay. So, if x equal to x naught is a singular point of one, so then what happens? This p x and q x. This p x and q x they cannot be expressed as convergent power series about the point x equal to x naught. Is it okay? Fine? Is it okay? Yes. yes? Now, yes. where the concept of regular points is coming, but if by somehow, if by somehow, we can, we can make these uh, coefficient functions px and qx work as analytic function about the point x equal to x naught. My job should be done, although I'm not still sure whether I'll be able to solve this differential equation or not, or whether I'm still going to get the conversion series or not. But what I can do, what I can do, if, say, if by multiplying, if by multiplying these coefficients of y prime and y by these two factors, I can make I can make these two new functions. Let me call it small px and let me call it small qx. I can make them analytic about the point x equal to x naught. Then the singular point x naught is called a regular singular point. Is it okay? Fine. Otherwise, x naught will be called an irregular point. Okay. Fine. I will again come back to this. I am definitely going to come back to this because the clue to the answers to many of the questions that may arise in your mind, it comes from these two. Let me tell you. Okay? Fine. So now, uh, if you recall, uh, yesterday I was considering your Lysander's equation, right? I was considering Lysander's equation. And uh, if you recall, if you recall, uh, it was what? 1 minus x squared y double prime minus 2xy prime plus p into p plus 1 equal to 0. Right? So this is nothing but this address equation. And then, I mean, you told me that once I reduce it to normal form, once I reduce it to normal form, Then what happens? Then what happens? These functions, this is px and this is qx. So what happens? They cease to be analytic at the point x equal to plus minus 1. Is it okay? Fine. x equal to plus minus 1. Okay. So both minus 1 and 1 are singular points for for this Lysander equation. Fine? So far so. So now what we did there in Lysander equation while trying to solve it, what we did there? Yes? We solved it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. We solved it, we solved it about an ordinary point. Is it okay? Right? Ordinary points are not singular points. Is it okay? Fine? Yes, sir. Yes? What we did here, instead of finding series solution about the points or about the points x equal to plus minus 1, what we did, we played it safe. We simply tried to, we simply tried to find out series solution for this uh, equation, this Lysander's equation, about some point which is not a singular point. 
Okay, still we got some solutions, right? And we were very happy about that. Okay, but the thing is that in many practical applications, particularly in physics and engineering, what happens? What happens? You need you need the behavior of the solution in the neighborhood in the neighborhood of the singular point or singularity and the singular point or singularity okay so then what is going to happen i must try to find out i must try to find out a solution about the singular point so now the question is is it possible is it possible for example uh, let me give you a two by x So obviously, you know that from the definition, or even forget about the definition. Even forget about the definition. You know that here your x equal to zero, x equal to zero is a singular point. Hmm. I'm still not bothered uh, whether they are regular or not. Although it is going to be regular in this particular case. Okay, fine. Obviously, there is singularity at x equal to zero, right? Is it okay? Fine. Now, now if you if you uh, try to find out solution, if you try to find out solution for this equation, you would see that your x and x inverse both are or one by x both are I mean solutions of this equation. Is it okay? Fine. So then, and of course they are linearly independent solutions. So you can simply uh, mean, plug this in here. Uh, so y double prime is going to be two by x squared, right? Or no, minus two by x cube, something like that. And uh, okay, this is zero. This is. Uh, 2 by x into 1. Uh, definitely, this is a solution. And then this is going to be what? 1 by x, then minus 1 by x squared. Then it is going to be 2 by x cubed, right? Okay. And then this is going to be. 2 by um, minus x cube. What about this? Uh, is it going to be a solution? Can you check whether x, x inverse is going to be a solution or not? x to power minus 1 minus 1. So minus 1 x to power minus 2. So then minus 1 minus 2 into x to minus 3. So 2 by x cube is fine. So then y prime. So this is 2 by x cube. This is 2 by x into what? Sir, we can manage both of 2. Uh -huh. Manage both of 2. Make y over dash plus 1 by x y dash minus 1 by x square y equal to 0. Huh. Then x and one by x will be solution. This satisfies, right? X will power minus yes, it, it satisfies, right? Okay. Am I taking the equation correctly? Minus the square. Okay, fine. Uh, it will satisfy. Okay. So basically, what I want to tell you is that what I want to tell you is that so uh, then. You are going to get something like this as a general solution, isn't it? Right? Okay? But the validity of the general solution, you are going to take something like this on it as your interval of definition. Okay? Now, what, what happens at x equal to 0? You are simply avoiding that, isn't it? Right? Or, in order to make this solution work throughout the whole real line, 
or in an interval containing the point zero, what you are going to do? You are going to take the safer path, like you are, you are simply going to find in C3 equal to zero. Right? So that is what we try to do, isn't it? Fine? But what we are going to do here, rather than avoiding them, rather than avoiding them, if by somehow, if by somehow, I can make this one as an analytical function, this one as an analytic function, so then what is going to happen? Let, let, let me tell you. For example, in this particular term, the coefficient of y prime, that is 2 by x, isn't it? So my problem is because of this single power x, right? Because of this single power of x, that is x to the power minus 1. And here, this is because of 1 by x squared. So now, if by somehow, see, normally your uh, series is 1, normally your series is 1, like say, uh, your a naught plus a1x plus a2x squared, da, da, da. But for this one, in this uh, particular term, if I want to have a series, that series has the possibility of having some form a my, uh, so th th this is just a constant, huh? this is just a suffix. This, and similarly, for this one, it has the possibility of something like this, pure. Isn't it? Right? So, at most, the troublemakers are this one and this one for us. Is it okay? Right? So whether we can devise something to get rid of those two or whether we can do something in such a way that even the presence of these terms, these terms are not going to bother us. So that's what uh, the solution procedure through Frobenia series is going to do for you in uh, the cases where the differential equation has regular singular point. Okay, so that we are going to discuss in our Tuesday's class. Okay, fine.